Good evening everyone and welcome to the latest Liberty Kids service. And before we go into praise and worship, let us pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for everything you have done for us. And thank you Lord for making us, ha making us have such good lives. And God, we ask that you ha take your place and have your way. And bless every kid that listens to this Liberty Kids service. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Now let us go into praise and worship. Christ died for us. He died for us. He gave his life for us. Let that sink in. Come on, sing it out, sing it out. <laughs> There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Come on, come on, sing it out now. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me.
You're coming after me. The wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming after me, there's no shadow you won't line up, mountain you won't climb up. You're coming after me, my God. You think I'm worth it. You think I'm worth it. I'm worth it. You think I'm worth it? Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Say, oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Your love is amazing. Today's memory verse is 1 John 4, 19. We love because God first loved us. I'll say that again. 1 John 4, 19. We love because God first loved us. God's people, the Israelites, had lived in the land of Egypt for a very long time. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was afraid of the Israelites. He was worried that they might go to war against the Egyptians. So he made a plan. First, he made the Israelites work very hard, hoping that that would keep them from growing in number. But the harder they worked, the more Israelites there were. Finally, the cruel king ordered the Egyptians to throw all the baby Israelite boys into the river and let them drown. One family found a way to save their baby boy. They hid him at home. But as he grew bigger, they were afraid someone would find him. So they came up with a new plan. The baby's mother took reeds from the riverbank and used them to weave a basket. She carefully covered the basket with tar and pitch so water wouldn't leak in. Then she laid the baby in the basket and put a top on it. She prayed as she carried the basket to the river and hid it in the rushes that grew in the water near the riverbank. The baby's older sister, Miriam, played nearby to keep watch over the basket, and God sent angels to watch over the little baby as the basket gently rocked in the water. Before long, the king's daughter came to the river. There in the water she saw the basket. She sent one of her maids to bring it to her. Imagine her surprise when she opened the basket and found a baby boy inside. She felt sorry for the baby and decided to keep him for her own. And right then and there, she named him Moses. Miriam came running up to the princess. Shall I go get one of the Israelite women to take care of the baby for you? She asked. Oh, yes, the princess answered. Please do. Miriam ran home as fast as she could. She and her mother hurried back to the princess. The princess asked Moses' mother to take him home with her and raise him until he was a big boy. Then he would go live with the princess in the royal palace. Moses had been saved. Now his family wouldn't have to worry about soldiers throwing him into the river. They were so thankful that God had answered their prayers. Their precious baby was safe. Hello and happy Sunday. Welcome to the Liberty Kids broadcast. My name is Shirley and I hope you have been well and you've smiled many, many times this week. I just want us to begin with a lovely prayer. So close your eyes with me and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to learn more about your word. Thank you for these amazing people watching this video. Thank you for blessing their lives. Thank you for protecting them. Thank you for loving them. Heavenly Father, whatever we do today, let it be according to your will, for your glory, and let us learn and grow from our experience. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
Let's begin. This week, we have a special story that comes from the book of Exodus. Exodus means a lot of people leaving. Have you ever left a place you've known all your life? Have you ever left an old home, or an old school, or an old church, or an old group of friends, or a place or people that you loved so much? This story is about a lot of people leaving a place that was all they knew because God loved them and wanted better for them. This story also involves a little cute baby. Can you guess which baby the story will be about? Hmm. It's actually a story about baby Moses and it's a story of special promises or agreements that God makes to his people. We are his people and God promises to take care of us. That reminds me of our Bible verse. Are you ready? Get your Bibles and open it to Exodus chapter 2, verses 23 to 24. Our memory verse is from Exodus chapter 2, verses 23 to 24. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The people of Israel groaned because they were forced to work very hard. They cried for help and God heard them. God heard their cries and he remembered the agreement he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What I love about that memory verse is that God heard their cries and God kept his promise. So it's very important to know that whatever we go through, God hears our cry, God hears what we say, God hears how we feel, and he knows how we feel. And so we should always turn to him for help. So, we're going to start our story about baby Moses. Are you ready? A pharaoh is an Egyptian king. And once a new pharaoh ruled over Egypt where the Israelites were living at that time. And the new pharaoh was not so nice and he didn't know about God and he didn't know about God's love and he didn't know about the blessings he had for God's people. And so he didn't think nice thoughts about them. When he saw how many Israelites there were, he became afraid of their power. He became afraid of their blessings and he was very jealous and very mean. He warned the Egyptians that if war came, the Israelites would side with their enemies and then leave the country. He said very, very mean things about them. So the people of Egypt listened to the king and forced the Israelites to become their slaves. They made them work without paying them. They made them do very hard, hard work. Work that was very, very difficult to do. And the Egyptians were very mean to them. They didn't help them. They weren't kind. They had people called slave masters that would speak to them in a very mean way and force them to make a lot of things. And so the tough slave masters made them build the cities of Pithom and Ramesses. It was, it was very hard work. They didn't have very cool machines in those days. It was all done by hand. But even though the Egyptians were very mean to them and horrible to them and made them slaves and made them work so hard, the people of Israel were very, very blessed. They had lots of children and family and they grew and they multiplied and they grew even more stronger because God loved them.
The Egyptians saw this and they weren't happy. So they made the people of Israel work even harder. They forced them to build things that were very difficult to build with their hands. There were two lovely midwives that helped the Hebrew women to have very lovely babies. And these women were called Shafira and Pua. The king of Egypt, Pharaoh, called them and said that if a Hebrew woman had a boy, a baby boy, they had to kill it. And only if the baby was a girl could they let it live. This was such an evil, evil order. But the midwives obeyed God and did not listen to the Pharaoh. They let the baby boys live because they loved God, they believed in God, and they loved the people of Israel. So Pharaoh called the midwives to ask why the baby boys were not killed. But the excuse the ladies gave was that the Hebrew women were giving birth to baby boys before they had time to help them. Then Pharaoh gave a very, very evil order. He said that every baby boy born to a Hebrew woman, that's a woman from Israel, must be thrown in the river Nile and killed. A Hebrew man and wife from the tribe of Levi had a baby boy. They hid him away from the Egyptians for three months. They loved this baby boy and they wanted to protect him as many parents would want to protect their babies. But as the baby grew older, it became harder and harder to keep him hidden. So the baby's mother came up with an idea to keep her baby out of sight. She got a basket made from papyrus leaves and covered it in tar and pitch to make it waterproof. It was a very smart idea.
So, Moses' mother put the baby Moses in a basket and carried it down to the river Nile. And Moses' sister, her young daughter, helped her. The mother hid the basket in tall grass by the side of the river, and Miriam kept watch over the baby from a distance. Unexpectedly, Pharaoh's daughter came to the river to bath. She spotted the basket and sent one of her attendants to fetch it. When Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, opened the basket and saw the baby crying, she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said, and she picked him up. Miriam, who had been watching, came up to the princess and she said, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? And the princess said yes. Miriam ran to get her mother. Take this baby and nurse him for me, said the princess, and I will pay you. So Moses' mother looked after her child until he was old enough to be taken to the princess where he was brought up as her son. Princess named Moses, 
Moses. And that's an Egyptian word that means drawn out because she drew him out of water and the princess told everybody. And she was very happy to have Moses as her son. And that's how Moses became the prince of Egypt. And this story does not end here. Moses grows up and he eventually becomes someone who helps free the people of Israel from Egypt. He takes them on a long journey through, through the desert towards the promised land. A journey where people change, a journey where people grow, a journey where old habits have to become new. And that's very similar to our lives. God takes us from places where we don't feel so happy or are not very kind to us and God transforms our lives and God takes us on a journey where we become better, where we become his people, where we serve him, where we love him and where we fully represent Jesus on earth. I think the story of Moses is a very beautiful story. It starts off a bit scary but it ends in a very lovely way. So, let's discuss. Wow, what a story. God loved the people of Israel so much and he heard their cries. He saw the very mean things the Egyptians did to them and he saved a young baby who grew up to become the leader who followed God. He became a leader who grew up as a prince of Egypt and was bold enough to tell the Pharaoh to let the people stop being slaves and to free them to go to their own special land. This shows God's amazing love. God's amazing love extends to us as well. God wants to save us from sins and bad things that makes life bad for us. And so he sent his own son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and pay the price for our sin. Jesus rose up again and gave us freedom. Whenever we go through new things, we can always count on God to keep his promises. Even if we don't understand what's going on or we're confused, or it's very scary. God always keeps his promises to help us. So this week, I want to challenge you to find lots of moments to read our Bible, to read your Bible and to read about God's promises to you. Let it fill you with peace, love and joy. You can read about baby Moses in Exodus chapter one and two and other stories of God's promises. Can you guess a few? I can think of one. It's from the New Testament. It's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid. He gave us a spirit of power and love and self-control. And another thing. What can God use you to do? Can God use you to keep his promises to others? Can God use your smile to bless your parents? Can God use your hard work to bless children's church? Can God use your kindness to bless your friends? How can God use you? Think about that as well, because God used Moses to free the people of Israel. How can you be a blessing as well? These are great things to think about on your leadership journey. Well, thank you very much for listening to this story. So now it's quiz time. It's quiz time. What is the king of Egypt called? A pharaoh. Did you get that? What are the names of the midwives in the story? Shafira and Pua. Who took Moses from the basket in the river Nile? The princess. Who does God love most in the whole wide world? You! 
Thank you so very much for joining me today. Um, it was lovely to have you and I really enjoyed that story and discussion that we had. So I'm so happy and excited that you joined us. If this is your first time, I would like to extend a very, very warm welcome to you. If your mummy and daddy are new as well, remind them to fill in a form on the main church's broadcast that will invite them to our church. Well, thank you and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you very much for today's lesson. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for equipping us. Thank you for expanding our knowledge. Thank you for helping us to grow in you, grow in our love for you. Father, Lord, we ask you to take our hearts, take place in our hearts, win us fully for you, that our soul belongs to you, that you are our savior, and that everything we do is for you and for you alone. Help us to be your children. Help us to live in your light, to live in your word. Help us to remember to read our Bible and pray every day and to grow stronger and stronger in your word. Father, Lord, if there are any situations that we need to be rescued from, like the people of Israel were rescued from, Father, Lord, I pray that you rescue us all from any situations. I pray that you save us. I pray that you help us. I pray that you equip us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you for joining me today and see you next week Sunday. Bye-bye. Welcome to Bible Trivia. This time we'll be asking guess who questions. The first question for 100 points. In the Bible, this person builds a huge boat. Is it A, Moses, B, Jonah, C, Noah, or D, Elijah? The answer is C. In the Bible, Noah builds a huge boat. The next question for 200 points. He is a shepherd who used a slingshot to stop a giant. Is it A, Jacob, B, David, C, John, or D, Joshua? The answer is B. David is a shepherd who used a slingshot to stop a giant. The next question for lots and lots of points. They were thrown into a fiery furnace. Is it A, three Hebrew boys, B, three wise men, C, three Galileans, or D, three Babylonians? The answer is A. Three Hebrew boys were thrown into a fiery furnace. The next question for one half of a point. He delivered the Ten Commandments from God. Was it A. Elijah, B. Jacob, C. Moses, or D. Andrew? The answer is C. Moses delivered the Ten Commandments from God. The next question for 500 points. She is the mother of Jesus. Is it A. Mary, B. Joanna, C. Anna, or D. Esther? Esther. The answer is A. Mary is the mother of Jesus. The next question for supercalifragilistic number of points. He is Esau's twin brother. Is it A. Isaac, B. Jacob, C. David, 
or D. John. The answer is B. Jacob is Esau's twin brother. The next question for 1,000 points. She talks to a snake. Is it A, Eve, B, Ruth, C, Mary, or D, Joanna? The answer is A. It's Eve who talks to a snake. The next question for a dozen points. He walks on water. Is the answer A, Matthew, B, Paul, C, James, or D, Jesus? The answer is D, Jesus walks on water. The next question for 800 points. He is a king known for his wisdom. Is it A, David, B, Solomon, C, Josiah, or D, Saul? The answer is B, King Solomon was known for his wisdom. Now the last question for double your current points. He was swallowed by a great fish. Is it A, Noah, B, Jonah, C, Aaron, or D, Adam? The answer is B. Jonah was swallowed by a great fish. Thanks for playing Bible Trivia. We hope you'll play again soon. Welcome back everyone and hope you enjoyed today's Liberty Kids service. And before we go, let us pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, we thank you for everything you have done for us. And thank you Lord for everyone that listened to this service. And please bless them in, in the following days. And, hope, and, and we hope that we, they have an amazing week ahead. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until next week, stay liberated. Stay liberated.